my fellow Heroclix players. Today we're going to be talking about part two of the Gotham City Indoor map. And uh, we're going to be talking about Quadrant 2 and if I can get to it, maybe Quadrant 3. So last time where we left off is we talked about Quadrant 1. And that was this area all the way over here, right here. So... Let's jump into part two. This is one, and we're going to talk about this section up here. Now, before we get started, I want to point out this section right here in the middle. This section is is um, it's pretty equal on both sides, but it's unique to this map because it's sort of squared off in the sense that if you have characters fighting in here in this area or this area up here down there they're kind of in their own isolated section up inside the map compared to fighting over here over here over here or over here so we're going to save that for probably the last video at the end so let's get into the quadrant number two all right, so quadrant number two, you are looking, you're facing a another funnel, and that funnel is starts right in this area. This one's a little harder to use compared to quadrant one, where you were down here, where you had the line of sight and whatnot. Up here, you are kind of you're you're kind of restricted into what you can do. This section, you're facing a couple things you have up here. You have the obscuring terrain right here. You have the blocking the blocking wall terrain, which is just along the edge of these squares. So these give you a little spot where you can kind of sidestep out, attack, or you can do a couple things here like running shot and attack. Or you can attack and then sidestep back. That would be beneficial for a more hit and run type gameplay. Up here you have blocking terrain and hindering terrain. Hindering, all this is hindering. And this is hindering right here. You can, in the obscuring terrain here, you can place your characters with stealth. So they can't be the target of an attack, but they can move freely through it and they can attack freely in it. Now, of course, if you got characters with stealth, they more than likely have sidestep, it's traded sidestep, traded stealth, uh, something that allows them to move freely through the hindering anyway. Leap climb, Batman usually has uh, that power. Or you'll have a character that has improved movement which will allow them to move freely through the hindering terrain. Either way, obscuring terrain gives you the benefit of stealth, gives you the plus one to defense when it comes to lines of fire, but it does not stop your movement. Now, why would you want to use obscuring terrain? Obscuring terrain because say you have characters that don't have the improved movement or they don't have sidestep, they don't have leap climb, so, when they get stuck in hindering terrain, they're stuck there. They have to move. They have to get in, stop their movement, and then half their movement when they're attempting to move out of it. That's, that's, uh, it's not good if you're attempting to chase down characters or if your opponent does have the sidestep or he has the ability to the improved movement where he's just running right through the hindering and you're he's hitting you, running away, moving up a couple squares, attacking you the next turn. It can be uh, pretty morale breaking. It definitely can break into the long game. Using obscuring terrain to your benefit by getting the plus one to the defense and the no negatives on your movement can help you a lot. Now, if your opponent... Say your opponent's using the obscuring terrain. This, this, or they're over here. Your opponent's going to get the plus one to the defense. So you have to counter that 
by not making a ranged attack on them, hopefully knocking them out of the obscure in the terrain, making them chase you, or waiting until they move out of it, either by making a mistake or by making a play where they have to move out because they're just out of range. So they have to move to make to attack you, or they want to move up in order to block you. Blocking in this section is narrowed down to this one area where you have two squares of, of width. With this wall being here, this stops characters from moving back and forth through this section. Now, you do have characters who have the ability to break the wall when they move through it, or they ignore walls for line of, sight, line of sight purposes, or they can attack through the wall, and that's the improved targeting, which is the brown damage symbol on the improved targeting. When they attack a character that's on the other side of the wall, they ignore the block and terrain line drawn through it. It is automatically destroyed. So... Make sure you know what abilities your opponents have if they have that power to shoot through the wall, move through the wall, and break it. You don't want to be snuck up on with them coming around the bottom or them coming through the side and attacking here. This is another funnel right here. No matter which side you're on, whether you're over here or you're over here, you can use the funnel to direct your opponent's figures into your area or keep them stalled at this funnel to where you can pick them off one by one or you can force them to break up, to split, go around the side, the bottom, down here in this area. Or they can move backwards into this area. Now, let's say you're on you you're on this side, and you decide that you want to use this funnel up here to your advantage. You have a couple characters. And your opponent has a couple characters. If you want to use this funnel, you must count, calculate how much movement a character has, how much range they have, and if they have any powers, any abilities that can allow them to shoot through the wall, to move extra, to attack extra, to get an extra attack, or if they have something like, or that would allow them to move their characters freely into here. Couple examples of that would be telekinesis, running shot, sidestep, or a white power that will allow them to make an extra movement or an extra attack after they move. So you're over here, your opponent's in this area, down here. Do you want to move here? If it's your go and you have both both your characters the ability to move to give to give them actions, moving here is a terrible idea. Now the reason I say that is because you are open for shots from them. Both of these guys have clear line of fire to here 
and to here. So you can be hit by twice by your opponent without them even moving. They won't even have to move. You're moving directly towards them. So a better option would be moving in back here or around the back. Now, if somehow you ended up in these two squares, that would be a good option. Moving in through the side. I personally would like to move, if I was moving my characters from down here, I would keep them behind here. If your character somehow ended up here in this area, staying here or moving would be a better option. Staying here would allow you to be protected by the blocking terrain that is coded here. This is one, two, three, four, five, six. Six squares. Characters can easily walk that distance within. All characters can at least move six. Uh, uh, very few and far. There is very rare that a character cannot move more than. That cannot move six squares. Moving there, they're not going to have line of fight uh, sight for you. Moving here, that's a perfect diagonal. So they can hit, oh, excuse me, that is not a perfect diagonal for this one, but they can hit this one. If they move here, they will have perfect diagonal to hit you there. And if they can hit you there, they can hit you here. Characters that can move six, if they have running shot, if they have a movement of 10 or 11, they can get there and make an attack. So that may not be the best option for you. If these characters have charge, you may want to stay there. Hopefully they're going to move. You're going to force your opponent to move down here to chase after you. If you come around this side... You'll force them to have to shoot around this blocking terrain. One, two, three, four. Four squares. What choices do they have if they cut around this way? Five, six, seven, eight, nine. They'll be within range, but they may not be able to make an attack. If they had gone this way, five, six, seven, eight, they're going to be using up all their movement again. So you could hide back there and force them to come to you. That's one option. Another option is blasting right through this blocking terrain. Now, is this going to be a good decision for you? This would allow them to move. One, two, three, four, five. They'd have a straight shot to you. If they move down here, one, two, three, four, five. They'd have a straight shot to you as well. That may not be a good idea. You're opening up the door for them. So, using this map to your advantage means using the maze-like structure of this map to tie up your opponent's movement. And to improve your chances of successfully dodging their lines of fire. Another option you have is blocking the funnel is blocking the walkway a way you can do that is put a cheap piece that you're okay with with sacrificing some cannon fodder right here blocking the area for your opponent to move and more than likely forcing them to make the decision of attacking Depends on who you play. Your opponent's going to have 
about three different choices here. By if you place somebody in this area, they're gonna take the bait. They're gonna shoot, lock themselves up. You can come in with your own running shot, your own movement style, attack powers, and then attack them. The second thing that they had they can do is they completely ignore the cannon fodder, attack the walls themselves, break it down to get to you. Or come down here and break the walls down with their running shot or movement powers. Or they can completely ignore it entirely and run away, run away, causing you to chase them. So that's all that I have to, for you today on quadrant number two. We're going to wrap this up and when we come back, we will be looking at quadrant three and how we can use this to our advantage and what are the pitfalls of this side of the map once again thanks for listening to advanced hero click strategies if you like the video please leave a like and the and a subscribe and i'll be sure to get you out uh quadrant three as soon as possible thanks have a great day